All right, so a pretty nerdy video today, all about Derek G's Tour de France prep. Now, I went to altitude for about two and a half weeks. I went through all his training sessions, seeing what he's doing, see what Israel are planning. They did pretty well in Merkin Tour, not unreal, but a couple of them, like Richard Tello and Bennett, look decent. So clearly they're doing some stuff right. But anyway, first of all, we'll kind of just look at the macro scale on his Strava. So obviously this is all from Strava, so you can see 18 hour week, two 30 hour weeks, and then basically he's just been back in Girona. Um, Monday was the last day of his camp, so just riding easy now. So we'll kind of go through the general structure of it. And then there's a couple of training sessions that I want to have a more a more detailed look in. Uh, and you can see like kind of what they get up to. So first day is Wednesday. So they're staying in Isla, which is about 2,000, 2,100 meters. So pretty high up, but not crazy. It's pretty standard. Most people generally say over 2,000 meters is where you get the best um, best kind of return for the altitude. It's not too high that you're not going to recover, but also not too low that you still get decent adaptations. So my key for intensity is basically green is like zone two uh, or below really. So kind of like zone one in the three zone model. Orange is like hard, but not crazy. And red is like, yeah, this is hard. So you can see it turns up a couple hours easy. Um, 300 watts for him, I reckon is about, it's still zone two. I reckon is LT1. So like when he starts making like lactate starts going up, it's probably like 350 maybe for Derek G. So 300 watts, although it seems a lot, it's not that hard for him. So I kind of have done some stuff about that, just showing that it's not a full easy ride, but at the same time, uh, it's also not difficult. Lactate testing, this is what I think they did because they just went out and they did one climb and then he basically reduced the time, increased the power. So probably just checking that his zones are correct. There wasn't a crazy amount of lactate. You can see they know 384, 11, 440. So his threshold is probably, you know, around 411 to 440 would be prediction. I think it could be higher, but maybe they were just checking. Um, you know, since, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure. Obviously, this is just pure speculation. So the first kind of three day block, not really too difficult. Day off, then starts coming the effort. So you can see in general, it's a three day on one day off block, but it's not 100% sure. So first day, um, also all the efforts are done at sea level. Obviously, none of them done at altitude because Derek G, I assume, is not thinking he's going to compete on really high altitude days. So they're all done at low altitude, which is interesting, but not too surprising. That's quite quite standard. So you can get the best power numbers out. So you can see he's doing 50 minute progression at intervals. So the three of them, and then 373, 94, 20. Again, next day, we do some aerobic sessions, um, some stuff which we'll go through in a minute. Seven hour endurance ride. Again, like on these, he's probably just riding well. The, the climbing boys, like Steve Williams, so he'll just ride at high zone two, probably low zone three on a lot of the clients for him because that's probably mid zone two for most of the climbing boys. Again, you can see like he does... His easy days um, are not always that easy, like 226 for two hours 50, I wouldn't say is that easy. Like I know he's very strong, but it's not like a super easy day. Um, but maybe it's just to keep the legs going because it is a really intensive block. They maybe think he can do three weeks, two and a half weeks really, really hard, and then actually have put full rest afterwards. So again, going into some intervals, a lot of threshold stuff, so you can see 15 minutes with hard starts, more general endurance, then some VO2 work again on the last day, which is interesting. Maybe not how most people do it with VO2 on the first day. Then a rest day, uh, another rest day, which is kind of weird. Two rest days in a row. Maybe they're just feeling tired. I think the weather could not have been great. And then this this end block here is pretty horrific. Um, if you really look at it, it's kind of like a three-day block of full intervals every single day. Uh, they're not pleasant. And then day off, again, 99 heart rate. Kind of goes to show 220 normalized is easy. And then, again, two really hard days to finish it off. So in general, it's not really like I'd say... a obvious structure it's kind of just a bit of carnage but we'll go through some sessions now so the first session we're going to look at uh, and i think is interesting to to see is how they do their anaerobic spikes so generally altitude a lot of people don't do much race intensity because they think that you know the blood work is kind of why you're there you don't need to do too much israel i think do a decent amount um they're going to the dauphine so i guess they need to be mildly competitive there um in order to get a lot of the adaptions that they're wanting to get out of the dauphine so you can see it's 10 minute efforts more or less we've got a minute and a half uh, we'll go back to a minute and a half um, at 3.18 and 30 second surge at 5.70. So you can see here, like, it's pretty standard stuff. His heart rate does get up towards the end, 166, 170. Uh, so you can see they do the first two intervals together with only, like, a 10-minute rest in between. So that's kind of, I guess, doing the repeatability. Um, and then what's interesting is that they then have about two hours, 50, two and a half hours of riding, and then they do the second set of intervals. So I think that's something to maybe take into consideration is that if you do want to improve repeatability, um that this is a good way of doing it because in between each session like it's going to be pretty productive because uh you are having time off in between we can see his heart rate's still pretty high like his heart rate here is starting 150 beats per minute which is pretty decent um because that means his heart rate's going to spike straight away which i guess is kind of like some of the adaptions they're trying to get and you can see here's max 181 here uh, while early on 
Again, it was 181, but it took a lot longer to come uh, to get to that higher point, while here it is a lot lot quicker uh, for it to get close to the max. So you can see on the second or third interval, it's doing 180. So you can see it's definitely more tired, um, or obviously dehydrated. There could be a lot of reasons, but generally you'd expect that to be more to do with tiredness. But yeah, it's like kind of interesting to see that like this second interval they're starting with is 3,000 kilojoules in, uh, which I guess is what you need to do as well to probably be able to do good numbers. I mean, it's not well tour, but... Israel kind of our world tour um so yeah that's interesting I think one other thing to mention about these power files is you'll see I'm pretty sure they drive down the valley because they don't often start today they did start in the same place but you'll see some of the rides they don't start and finish in the same place so I think sometimes they might actually drive down the valley here's another one it looked like he might be on his TT bike um he's got a picture of it but these intervals really don't look like TT intervals so I'd be kind of surprised if he was but maybe it was just part of it uh, so these, I think, are really race-specific. You can see this is getting towards the end. I haven't really done it in chronological order. Day 19 is this one here, Sunday. so almost the last one. And you can see it's it's basically 3 top, three by 10. Uh, the first two are 20 40s. The second one is a 40 20. So you can see the average power, 435 watts here. Um, and then I think this is also about 430 or 407, sorry. And then this last one is actually higher because it's 40 20. It's easy to get high average power. And the 40s are, the, are there. Actually, it's lower, sorry, 418 watts. Again, you can see heart rate getting pretty high up. Um, again, not doing them in any specific order. There's no real, um, you know, time between them seems pretty pretty relaxed. It's kind of just like when you want to do them. So interesting to see, but not that much volume, I'd say. It'd be interesting. Only three. I don't think that's that hard. Like I would expect in general, World Tour Pros to do more volume. Uh, maybe five of these intervals instead of three. But what it goes to show maybe is that you know, you can do five, but it doesn't actually stimulate you that much more than doing than doing three. So that's something maybe to bear in mind that actually on these really hard in in intervals, you don't need to do as much as maybe maybe people think. Here is, uh, I think, is some kind of race pace sim. These are actually probably the most impressive intervals we did, uh, day 14. So again, like, uh, they were kind of looked like maybe they were a bit of uh, race intensity. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find them here. I think there was... I think it was these ones. No, sorry, I've lost it. Anyway, 440 watts, 15 minutes, pretty impressive. Another 15 minute block, 417. The way they're so spiky, it makes me think they're like this. That's not, that's like not, his power meter is cooked, which I think it, it could be, but I doubt it. I reckon he's just following someone. And again, you can see the last one as well. Like there's obvious clear spikes. So maybe he's following someone's wheel um, or something like that. From a macro scale, you can see a bit, a little bit better what they're trying to achieve. The heart rate is going gradually up, but also going up and down. So it's over unders, which is always really, really um, productive because you're increasing lactate and then trying to re uh, re decrease it at high intensity. So yeah, a, a standard, standard session. I'd say again, only three, only three lots. So I think that's something to bear in mind. Even the World Tour Pros, they, they're cracking out six hours, but they're only doing three lots of intensity. So maybe the point is, okay, you can do more. He could do five, but there's just no need. Uh, day 16 was kind of just also interesting. So this was like a longer ride. Um, six and a half hours 300 normalized i'd say this is kind of like a general endurance ride but you'll see that actually he then did 420 watts on this climb and i think that's something i don't really get is there aren't very many days where he's really going super super easy uh actually like this is this ride here he's generally still riding pretty hard on the endurance days there are only a couple where you really think oh yeah they're cruising um and i think if we look at this on a whole i don't think this is like a a recipe for how to train. I think this is a recipe for how to get mega, mega fit in three and a half, in two and a half weeks at altitude. But I think if you actually looked at long term, this wouldn't be too sustainable because I'm not sure you could recover off this consistently. But that's something that I think I've seen from this. I mean, Caruso and some others is that the pros seem to do lots of intensity on every single day, but maybe not as much as you think. They don't do the Norwegian style where you're doing two hours at threshold twice a week and then the rest is really easy for example like they are doing a lot of decent intensity on a lot of days um so yeah that's kind of my conclusion if you're doing out camp would i copy this no i don't think so i think the things to learn from this is there's quite a lot of intensity on a lot of days there's a lot of spikes not much flat efforts they don't do that many intervals four by ten three by fifteen they don't do anything crazy you know there's no five by twenties here um for example so that that's something to take into consideration and that, you know, generally it's a three day on, one day off structure, not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time. So yeah, I do hope you found this video interesting. If you want me to do anyone else's altitude camps or training or whatever before the tour, let me know. I'm more than happy to have a look at them and, and see what I can glean from them. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.